My name is Joshua Baker. I'm a documentary director, journalist, and podcaster. I started documenting when I was 11 years old. My dad gave me a Canon 35mm stills camera and I fell in love with photography and with the power of images. And I sort of knew then that I wanted to become a storyteller. Filming in hostile environments, war zones, conflict zones, pretty much anything that can go wrong will go wrong. A lot of it becomes about being able to sort of adapt. And I think one of the things that's really helpful with that is having kit that is strong and versatile and allows you to sort of work in this ergonomic way. So today we're going to talk about how to prepare to go to the field, what sort of kit you need, how you need that set up, and things that you can do before you leave to make your life so much easier. So if I'm going away, I kind of want two of everything because things will get damaged, things will go missing. I'll have two cameras that are capable of doing different things. For example, the C70, it's got a 4K Super 35 DGO CMOS sensor. The advantage of that is that essentially the quality of the image that this camera is producing gives you a lot of flexibility in post. The C70 also has the same sensor as the C300 Mark III. So again, you're kind of getting that image quality, but just in a much more compact camera body. So one of the things that's also great about the C70 body is that it allows for interchangeable lenses. So right now it's got the RF 28 to 70 f2 all the way through on it, which is a beautiful lens. But the ability to put on a prime lens gives you a much more versatile way to work with this camera because the great thing about a prime lens is it allows for a greater depth of field and can give you that sort of cinematic look that zoom lenses don't tend to give you in the same way. And I love the 50 mil, it's just the focal length that for me is, is sort of one of my favorites, to be honest with you. The XF605 has a one inch type CMOS sensor. It's kind of like an all-in-one, if you think about it like that. It's got a 15 times inbuilt zoom, so you're not having to worry about changing lenses. It's also incredibly lightweight and very versatile as well. One of the features of this camera that a lot of people are going to like is the dual pixel autofocus. If you're running about gathering images quickly, this is a feature that you can use to help you out and think about the other things that you're doing. It really is a camera that allows you to just jump into an environment and start shooting. Now, I do a lot of podcast work as well as films, so sound has to be spot on. I need often a mic on me as well as a mic on my subject so we're getting my questions clearly and their answers. With the ability to internally record into both of these cameras, it means that your workflow when you're in the field is just that much easier. On my primary camera, no matter what it is, I put on a camera strap and that just means that I can rest the camera on my shoulder, I'm not putting it down, somebody's not going to come along and knock it over. And it also means that if something happens and something develops, you've got the camera by your side and you can quickly bring it up and start recording. The other thing that I do is I wear a camera belt. You don't need to be carrying around a heavy rucksack. That can be in the car with all your backup gear. This just puts everything on you so you're ready to go. One thing that is always just like an essential idea is to take as many camera batteries as you can. Fundamentally, if you run out of power, then you can't shoot anymore. But also when it comes to charging, one really easy trick is to just get yourself a multi-prong extension lead. And then that way you only need one adapter and you can set up all of your chargers plugged into the extension lead. In terms of memory cards, take as many as you can afford. I tend to have a minimum of four per camera. Also, if I can avoid it, after I've backed up my cards, I tend to try and avoid formatting them because it just means there's another place where the original material is held. So if something goes wrong with a hard drive, you know, it's there somewhere else. What Canon have come up with to try and ease that process is an app called the Content Transfer Mobile app. And it integrates with the XF605. And essentially what it allows you to do is transfer proxies or your full footage back through to an edit that could be anywhere in the world. And you can even do that as you're shooting. And the advantages of that are so clear. 
especially in a fast turnaround situation where you need to be getting content ready quickly for broadcast. Before any shoot, it is absolutely essential to do as much planning as possible. Like most of the plans that you make go straight out the window as soon as you put your foot on the ground. But having done the process of planning itself, it arms you with the tools to be able to adapt when you do arrive. But also there's prep around when you're creating narrative and story, thinking about what the scenes are you're gonna get. So how does a scene begin? What is that scene about? And how does that scene end? So just thinking about those little details details will help you and actually reduces stress because filmmaking is stressful. I really hope that this inspires you to go out there and create stories of your own. So much about this is just practice. It's about taking it out into the world, finding places that you can tell your own stories.